Yeah. Oh, now I'm moving too quick. Dang it. I just can't win, can I? Nice. Whew. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs>
the thing that makes the 1101 so strong is its 20 millimeter cannons. The 1101 doesn't have the best speed. In fact, you know, is, is mediocre speed, mediocre maneuverability, low end on the altitude performance. But what makes that particular plane so good is its 20 millimeter cannons. Could you imagine having excellent altitude, speed, and maneuverability plus the strongest cannons at the tier? Nah, nobody would play any other plane. There'd be no point to playing any other plane. And so I'm glad that they don't have 20 millimeter cannons on this particular plane. Unless they go to making tier 11 uh, planes, then, you know, all bets are off. Uh, but at tier 10, this plane just wouldn't make, uh, it'd be overpowered. It could be considered possibly pushing overpowered right now. Um, yeah, the guns were weak previously. They're still kind of weak now. Uh, but there's definitely a noticeable difference of your ability to melt down enemy targets. We actually do need to um, start capturing sectors and not keep talking kind of thing. Um, will our team get a mining facility? We could actually lose this, as silly as this sounds. I'm not going to go for the ground attacker. It has too many hit points for me to worry about that right now. I'm going too fast. Flying past these peoples. Luckily, we're not a MIG. And we can hit the air brakes and turn on a dime. In a way that a MIG could only wish about. Well, let's put these uh, machine guns to use. Obviously, we can just hold down the trigger. These machine guns take forever to overheat. And you know what? No complaints. Definitely no complaints. Is there any enemy aircraft over there? There's not, so there's no point in me going over there. Our yak friend did some yak stuff. Um, who are we going against here? BPP-212. Let's go ahead and knock him out. Got to watch out for those air-to-air -air rockets on that guy. But otherwise, not really a threat. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and get the, P the, T the T U 12 Try to push to get up a Campbell here, I guess. Have we gotten a heavy a heavy fighter? I don't even know. Um, so let's head back to the center here. Let's see if we can get our team to capture that. We are we're basically even on points here. Which is kind of a miracle considering how poorly we've been uh, capturing sectors. So let's stop them from capturing our garrison. I know it's just a garrison, but it's really to kill their ground attackers so we can stop worrying about them capturing so many sectors in general. Let's go ahead and knock out the Seahawk while we're at it. Oh, uh, this is like the... The most tanky Seahawk in the world. Let's go ahead and get our extra boost on. Knock out the planes that are dangerous to us. F7U can definitely be dangerous. Go ahead and take care of this bomber really quick. With the 50 caliber machine guns, you can fire a little bit early because you don't have to worry about them overheating just to get your guns on target. Um, oh no, Pfft, I forgot what I was going against there. The one plane that uh, the only time I'm gonna be worried about is going head on. I'm really actually lucky to be alive there. Uh, let's go ahead and head to the center. We are gonna lose this battle. We need to get that sector peoples. Paying more attention to the map than I am to the vehicle in front of me. It's a ground attacker. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead straight over there. Yep, we need to kill this GA. And we need to kill him quick. 
I guess I probably could have captured the center. Helped uh, stem the tide. Oh, our human's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now I'm moving too quick. Dang it. I just can't win, can I? Nice. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, the yeah, content. Uh, you know, trying to make it exciting over here. Uh, so anyway, that's the F-86A. I've um, got a plethora of medals there. Um, talking about just trying to make sure that we got 8,000 personal points so we could get a goddamn candy cane, and we ended up uh, having a pretty good game, we'll say there. Anyway, let's head on back. All right, so I've definitely got a ways to go on this flipping candy cane thing, don't I? Uh, I'm going to be streaming later today, 10.30 uh, a.m. Eastern Time. I'll do it on the North American server so that way I can do my daily missions and get uh, get some extra candy canes. But that being said, what are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about the F-86A. Um, so I was able to have a pretty darn good game there, right? Uh, part of it was manufactured, just not really pushing... Um, capturing sectors and things of that nature because I was kind of under the assumption that it would be a cakewalk. Ended up not quite being a cakewalk, uh, but was able to snag the win there. We got 21 kills. We died once, which is pretty disappointing. Uh, but, you know, you never give up just because of one death, right? Heck, you don't give up because of four deaths. Uh, but we were able to get 21,000 personal points. Uh, almost 13,000 aerial damage. Um, got some assists there and yada, yada, yada. So the thing with this plane is in its entirety, it's just a very well balanced machine. The, the guns were never the strong suit. So to make the guns strong, um, is to, to really kind of throw its balance out of whack. In my opinion, this plane's strong suit was its ability to do everything else. I've already mentioned the fact that, and we can even show it off here. Um, this plane's airspeed maneuverability and altitude performance is what set it apart. It's the balance of those. We can look right here, looking at the overall maneuverability. I don't have this plane, this particular plane maxed out, uh, but its maneuverability is going to be higher than the F-86, right? In fact, I don't even have the equipment properly set up on this plane. You can easily get this maneuverability above 100. Other than that, um, you know, the, the key 162 Mark III is going to be the closest next thing that, as far as maneuverability is concerned. And really, you're going to have to go up against something that is a specialized key 162 Mark III. To the, that's the thing you'd have to worry about being more maneuverable than you. Other than that, the F-86 is the second most maneuverable plane a fighter at tier 10. Airspeed's a different story, right? Airspeed, you've got the MiG-15. MiG-15 right out of the box has excellent airspeed. The Swift, again, right out of the box, actually has the best airspeed. Um, FW-252 has great airspeed as well. But the F-86 is right up there with them, and especially in the specialist configuration I have. Um, I'm not overly worried about being outsped by a MiG-15, a Swift, um, or planes like that. The fact of the matter is, the F-86 actually has the best rate of climb. Can't, uh, no arguments there, right? Now, clearly, well, geez, let's put the right pilot in here at least, could we? There we go. Gave it one more rate of climb foot per second. Um, clearly, speed is a big deal at tier 10, but the F-86 has plenty of it. It doesn't need to be the fastest plane to still be incredibly effective. And then it's altitude performance. Again, the only thing that's even on par with in regards to altitude performance is the MiG-15. And actually, I didn't even realize that the MiG-15 actually has worse altitude. Barely. You're splitting hairs at this point. Uh, the actual foot... Um, ceiling is the same. It's the rate of climb that, that marks a difference. So again, you're splitting hairs. It's not a big deal. You can basically say they're the same altitude performance. But the fact remains, nothing at this tier has this kind of balance as far as airframe. 
nothing that's even remotely this maneuverable is this fast and has this kind of altitude performance. Anything that's remotely this fast or has this altitude performance isn't nearly as maneuverable as the F-86. And so the F-86 um, you know, trump card, so to speak, was its flexibility, was its overall balance of the airframe. The guns were never the focus of this plane because it didn't matter. You could always outmaneuver the planes that you needed to outmaneuver, and you could always outspeed the planes you needed to outspeed, and so your guns could be weak because you were always going to be able to put your plane into a position to excel. That's why I thought this plane was the best tier 10 fighter before the buffs. And now after the buffs, it's just reinforced. Um, the guns, the damage per second that these guns do, 576. You can't get a buff to the guns on this. There's no equipment slot for the, the, the guns. So 576 is the best you're going to be able to do unless you get some sort of... Um, a bonus roll with your um, with your cockpit equipment, but 576 is you know it, it finally puts it above the Yak 30. Yak 30 gets those gets much better distance range, and chance of doing critical damage. So most people are still going to want to have the three 23 millimeter cannons that this particular plane has. The MiG 15 has 660 cumulative damage, and you've got a big honking 37 millimeter cannon. That is the same range as your your 50 cal machine guns on the F-86. LA-15 is the same gun setup as the Yak-30. Uh, 1101 is still the king when it comes to damage, your gun damage, at tier 10. You have four 20 millimeter cannons that are doing at least 800 damage a second. And on top of that, you can add equipment to the guns. I've got mine up to uh, 866, and I haven't even pushed it as nearly as far as it can go. The 252 can do 700 damage a second. And there's only two flipping cannons on here. The Swift can do... I've got mine boosted way up, almost to 800, with only two cannons on here. The only thing that's even remotely close to the weakness of the F-86 is going to be the Key 162. And the difference between this and that is the Key 162, at least it's cannons. I, a Key 162 is not my favorite tier 10 um, fighter for a lot of different reasons. Uh, the guns on this definitely are on the weaker side, but nobody's claiming the Key 162 to be the meta plane at tier 10. So the fact remains that the F-86 might have gotten a gun buff. Did it make its guns better than any other, uh, you know, plane at tier 10? No, for sure. In fact, it's still only, in my opinion, the guns are still only better than the Key 162s. Every other plane here is either on par or better. The Yak-30 and the LA-15, I'd say, are still on par just because you've got a decent amount more range and you're doing critical hits uh, with that range, even though the damage per second is slightly, slightly less. So did the buff, like, completely, you know, put, put the guns over the top? No, but what it did do is it still leaned into something that didn't really need leaning in at Tier 10 because the rest of this airframe was just so flippin' good. Yeah, the, the buff, I think, is more helpful or more needed, I should say, from Tier 9 and below, because those airframes didn't quite have the same extreme that the F-86 airframe has. F-86, there's no other there's no other plane in the game that you can say, yeah, I, can, I feel like I can basically outmaneuver everything, and I can basically outspeed everything, and I can basically out-altitude everything. Like, there's just not another plane in the game that does that, so... The, the gun buff on the F-86, I don't really think was needed. I'll certainly take it. I would not want to be in an MEP-1101 main right now just because the F-86 was always your pain in the butt if you were flying around the 1101, and now it's just going to be a bigger pain in the butt, right? Um, the damage that this plane now puts out to ground attackers and bombers <sighs> against a specialized GA and a specialized bomber, you're not going to notice a difference because those planes have built up their their defenses, whether it's their rear turrets, whether it's their overall hit points, whether it's just their survivability in general, and obviously the human behind the, the in the pilot seat of those planes, your damage per second is not going to make a huge difference in those engagements because, again, you're still a fighter. You're not meant to take on those planes. The F-86 is meant to kill the rest of these planes that we're looking at right here. It's meant to kill these planes right here. It's meant to go after these planes right here. Um, if it's t spending its time going after these planes, then 
you're, you're kind of wasting your time. Your guns are still not built to take on those high health pool planes that have great rear gunners. Uh, you're, the, the buff, remember, was only to the F-86's guns, not to the F-86's survivability. So you can't just sit behind a specialized EF-131 and expect to win. You're not going to do that. Or um, an MEP-1101B, I mean 1102, excuse me. You're, you're not going to win sitting behind a, a rear gunner of a ground attacker or bomber, so don't think that you can do that. What the guns will let you do, though, is win your air engagements quicker which will get you onto the next engagement quicker um, and allow you to use your airframe with even more flexibility. So I, I love this plane. I don't mind the buff. To me, it allows uh, the rest of the community that was kind of uh, not enjoying the American fighters kind of ho hopefully open their eyes to what the American fighters, the P-51s, the P-40s, um, to a lesser extent the FJ-1, well, what their capabilities are in this game. And knowing that you end up with this plane that is just so, so good, so well balanced, and now has a reasonable guns, um, you've got that, that incredibly awesome light at the end of the tunnel. And I think now the tunnel isn't even a tunnel anymore. Uh, the entire line has been quite enjoyable. Um, even the planes that I didn't quite enjoy previously, P-51A, I'm looking at you. Um, have, have been enjoyable. Not necessarily the, the top dogs at their tier, but at least not the bottom dogs at their tier. And so keep on plugging along. If you started um, flying the American fighter line, you're going to like it, I promise. And even if you don't, well, then you're going to like the tier 10 because it's just, it is, it is definitely the best tier 10 fighter uh, in World of Warplanes. Uh, you, can, you can always put yourself into a, a position to win one-on-one -on -one engagement now whether or not you can put yourself in a position to win the entire battle is a little bit team dependent but also dependent on your tact and um, your strategy and hopefully you don't uh, put it off to the last second like we did in this battle here anyway i'd love to hear your opinions do you have the f86a um, if not are you grinding down towards this plane how are you enjoying the the changes to the american 50 caliber machine guns i'd love to hear your opinion in the comments down below Otherwise, I hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you later. Bye.